The United Congregation of Israel presents The Covenants of Yahweh Written by Rhoda Israel Yahweh spoke of seven different covenants in Scripture. A covenant is an agreement or contract between two or more parties. Three covenants are made between Yahweh and mankind in general and are not limited to the nation of Israel. Most of the covenants which Yahweh made with the nation of Israel interconnect each other and are unconditional in nature. That is, regardless of Israel's obedience or disobedience, Yahweh will still fulfill these covenants with the nation of Israel. The first covenant is the Adamic covenant, also referred to as the Edenic covenant. This covenant can be thought of in two parts, the Edenic covenant of innocence and the Adamic covenant of grace. The Edenic covenant is found in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 through 30 and chapter 2 verses 16 through 17 and outlined man's responsibility toward creation and Yahweh's directions regarding the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the garden. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In sorrow you shall bring forth children, and your desire shall be to your husband, and he shall rule over you. And unto Adam, he said, Because you have hearkened unto the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In sorrow shall you eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face shall you eat bread, till you return unto the ground. For out of it was you taken, for dust you are, and unto dust shall you return. Genesis chapter 3, verses 16 through 19. The Edemic Covenant included the curses pronounced against mankind for the sin of Adam and Eve, as well as Yahweh's provision for that sin, such as the promise of a Redeemer, Yahshua, the last Adam. The second covenant is the Noahic covenant, which was an unconditional covenant between Yahweh and Noah. After the flood, Yahweh promised humanity that he would never again destroy all life on earth with the flood. Yahweh gave the rainbow as a sign of the covenant, a promise that the entire earth would never again flood and a reminder that Yahweh can and will judge sin. And it shall come to pass, when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. Genesis chapter 9 verses 14 through 15. In the third covenant, the Abrahamic covenant, Yahweh promised many things to Abraham. Yahweh promised to make his name great, that Abraham would have numerous physical descendants, that he would be the father of a multitude of nations, and he and his seed would be given the land. In the same day, Yahweh made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto your seed have I given this land, from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Genesis chapter 15, verse 18. One of the nations of Abraham's lineage was our nation, Israel, through which all of the nations of the earth would be blessed because Israel would become a nation of priests to teach the world as called. While Abraham had many sons, 
Scripture confirmed the covenant with Esau and called him your only son. Scripture said, In Esau shall your seed be called. Genesis chapter 21 verse 12. This is also a reference to the Messiah who would come from the line of Abraham through the twelve tribes of Israel. The fourth covenant, the Palestinian covenant of Deuteronomy chapter 30 verses 1 through 10 amplifies the land aspects which were detailed in the Abrahamic covenant where Elohim promised Israel their land in Palestine as an everlasting inheritance. Because of Israel's disobedience, Yahweh caused them to be scattered throughout Europe and Asia. Judah, with parts of Benjamin and Levi, were scattered to a land that their fathers didn't know. But Yahweh will eventually restore our nation wholly upon the mountains of Israel. Once restored, Israel will obey Him perfectly, and Yahweh will cause us to prosper. The fifth covenant, the Mosaic covenant, beginning in Exodus chapters 19 through 24, contains the foundation of the Torah, the first five books called the Law. The full account of the covenant is in the book of Deuteronomy. In this covenant, Elohim promised to make the children of Israel his special possession among all people if they obeyed to make them a kingdom of priests and to give the children of Israel the Sabbath as the permanent sign of this covenant. Keep therefore the words of this covenant and do them that you may prosper in all that you do, that he may establish you today for a people unto himself and that he may be unto you a Elohim as he have said unto you and as he has sworn unto your fathers, to Abraham, to Esau, and to Yaakov. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verses 1 through 29. Part of the Mosaic Covenant was the Ten Commandments found in Exodus chapter 20, which was a summary of the entire law code containing 613 laws, statutes, and judgments. 248 which were positive and 365 with dire consequences. The Mosaic Covenant was a conditional covenant that either brought Yahweh's direct blessing for obedience or Yahweh's direct cursing for disobedience upon the nation of Israel. Deuteronomy chapter 11 verses 26 through 28 and Deuteronomy chapter 28 details the blessings for obedience and the cursings for disobedience. The Old Testament from Exodus to Malachi detail how Israel succeeded at obeying the law and how Israel failed miserably at obeying the law. However, this covenant of the law was magnified by Yahshua, the Messiah, and made honorable by his perfect example of walking in the spirit of the law rather than the letter. The sixth covenant is the Davidic covenant that amplifies the seed aspect of the Abrahamic covenant in 2 Samuel chapter 7 verses 8 through 16. This covenant promised that David's physical line of descent would last forever and that his kingdom would never pass away. Now the days of Dawid drew nigh that he should die, and he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be you strong therefore, and show yourself a man, and keep the charge of Yahweh your Elohim, to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, his commandments, his judgments, and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that you may have prospered in all that you do, and whithersoever you turn yourself. 
that Yahweh may continue his word, which he spake concerning me, saying, If your children take heed to their way, to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul, there shall not fail you, said he, a man on the throne of Israel. 2 Kings chapter 2 verses 1 through 4. This kingdom, furthermore, would have a ruling individual exercising authority over it. However, contrary to what the Gentiles teach, Anglo-Israel, the throne of Dawid has not been in place through the Queen of England or any other monarch of Europe. While Solomon failed to walk as his father Dawid, Yahshua the Messiah complied with the terms of this covenant in full. However, scripture indicates that the throne would never lack a man to sit on it, and someone from the seed of Dawid would again rule as king. This king is Yahshua, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The seventh and final covenant is the new covenant, also called the renewed covenant that is still yet future in being enjoined. Having found fault with the people, Israel, Yahweh said, Behold, the days come, says Yahweh, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Yehuda, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, says Yahweh. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said Yahweh, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a Elohim, and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know Yahweh, for all shall know me, from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Hebrews chapter 8, verses 7 through 12. The whole house of Israel lost their identity in their exiles. They had no covenant and became assimilated into the Gentiles' pagan way of living. They knew nothing about the Torah and lived as pagans. Yahweh will not break his covenant even though Israel broke their end. He is faithful to his word and covenants to Israel. The new covenant is our renewed covenant with him through Yahshua HaMashiach. Know therefore that Yahweh your Elohim, he is Elohim, that faithful Elohim, who keeps covenant and loving kindness with them who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9. Through this renewed covenant, Yahweh made a way for the house of Israel to return to him and for the house of Judah to be reunited with the house of Israel through Yahshua. Through Israel, the nations will cleave to him who is a Jew. The Gentiles shall come unto you from the ends of the earth and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. Shall a man make gods unto himself? and they are no gods? Yea, many people and strong nations shall come to seek Yahweh. Thus said Yahweh of hosts, In those days it shall come to pass, that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that Elohim is with you. Zechariah chapter 8 verses 22 through 23.